There are professional sports leagues for football, basketball, hockey, and all kinds of others, but professional video gamer? The Carbondale valedictorian turned pro and is known to the rest of the world by his gamer name, Alige. He's a gem. You don't run into too many people like him. He's doing great because he pushed himself. He was always willing to move forward. He's a perfectionist, and he works utterly hard. He is just a good boy. Growing up in Carpendale, it was a pretty small town. There wasn't really that much to do and there wasn't that many people that went to my school. So it was kind of hard to find people that had similar interests to me. So most of my like summers and days, I just ended up spending on the computer and playing. There really wasn't a lot going on other than school activities or him playing with the neighbor kids that would be in the yard. So it wasn't really all that crazy or exciting. John is actually the baby of the family. My oldest is 33, and my son is 31. And then the twins, which is Jonathan and Emily, they're the last. My brother Anthony introduced me to gaming when I was about like three or four. We only had one computer, so I would end up being like that brother that just like sit over his shoulder, like waiting for my turn to play, like watching him play. Just whenever he's ready for a break, I would take my shot and start playing. Me and John were very close as brothers. When he was really little, you know, he was pretty much always by my side, like watching me play in the one computer we had at the time. If I was playing Counter-Strike or Age of Empires, he was like right there. When John was about three years old, he would just torment Anthony to the point where I'd have to say, Anthony, please, just to shut him up, let him play for a little while. So Anthony would get off the computer, he'd pop in a children's game, and John would say, I don't want to play that. I want to play what he's playing, which was Age of Empires. Well, before you know it, Jonathan got really good at playing Age of Empires. Eventually, probably after about Six months to a year, I had to get another computer because the arguing and the fighting was a little too much. And that's where it snowballed. I would end up playing every single thing that he did, and I would just want to be better than him. And he, of course, would play me because he would want to show that he's the better one. So he definitely was like that competitive person that I would try to like beat and be better than as I was growing up. I always wanted a brother want to be just like me, and. I got someone just like me, except he's just better. When I was growing up in elementary school, I did Taekwondo for five years. I think that was my main other interest uh, besides gaming. He was part of the Special Forces team and in the Special Forces, they taught the kids how to do bow staff. He really enjoyed it. We basically were there every week for five years. I am Master Steve Landgraf from Red Dragon Karate USA. Johnny Jablinowski, uh, we just call him Johnny Jabs. That might be his new name. They might be like, hey, we're gonna call him Johnny Jabs from now on. So to get on a Special Forces team, you have to be exceptional. You have to really train hard so they trained harder than everybody else. I started up a little bit later than some of like my other classmates. So all my friends were the higher belt above me just by a little bit. So I really wanted to like get up with them. So I, I asked if I could skip a belt basically. And uh, he's just like, yeah, we, we could do that, but you're gonna have to work like extra hard if you want that to happen. And it really was a lot harder and it taught me a lot. I think the biggest thing that I learned from it is just, you know, having discipline, not giving up and being respectful. When you're taught that type of stuff from a young age, I think that it carries over a lot and really helps. You could see that he was always 
watching and learning. Other kids would look around and he would be focused on what we were doing because you had to make certain teams within the team and move forward. So that's where he gained a lot of his focus that he ha I think he has today. Every month or so, I'll sit my black belts down and I'll ask them, I'll say, what's the end for you? Where do you want to be? What will make you happy in life? And then go for it and start researching it now at eight, nine, 10 years old. And I said, all right, Johnny Jabs, what do you want to be when you get older? You know, what do you want to do? So he said, I'm going to be a gamer. So I said to him, I'm like, well, what's your plan B? What's, what else? You know, why don't you pick something else just in case? He says, oh no, sir. And he points at a sign on a wall that I have that says, winners never quit, quitters never win. And he goes, no, no, that's it. That's all I want to be. So since a young boy, he wanted to do this. The game that I definitely took more competitively was Counter-Strike 1.6 I was growing up. As I was like playing Counter-Strike, I ended up really getting into StarCraft. The first like LAN that I remember going to was MLG Rally, and I was like 13 or 14. I was already super ready to be, start becoming like a, a pro at that point. I really liked competing in those. They were super fun. I ended up going with like my, my teams at the time. They were really good memories, the first couple lands that I had. That game was really good for me for a lot of different ways because when you make a mistake or when you lose, the only person that you can blame at the end of the day is yourself and the game devs. I'm just kidding. But yourself primarily. So you have to really learn how to fix those mistakes and if you don't do that, then you're never gonna be able to succeed. And I kind of put that aspect of the game throughout other parts of my life. I never really thought it was going to be a career choice. I knew that when he was 16, I kind of got a little bit nervous at that point because we were signing a contract. And I didn't want anybody owning my child because he was only 16. When I was first getting offered to join on Elevate at the time, I was just like, mom, just trust me, nothing's bad like with this. And I just like had her sign it. I totally trusted Jonathan. Once I signed the papers, I just let him go from there and I never researched it or anything. I just put all my trust in him. My family really was like supportive of me. I mean, it was nothing like super serious. They just kind of viewed it as a hobby. I would just go to lands like for fun, like whatever money that I had, I would just like pay for like the plane tickets or like whatever peripheral stuff that I need. So I was, I guess, taking it as like a part-time job type of thing. Obviously trying to be as competitive as I can in esports because I want to win. But also in school, I also want to win in school and I want to do as good as I can. I never had any complaints about uh, any of my teachers or my schooling. He was a genius. Like, he would always just get hundreds, hundred fours easily. He really pursued perfection to a very high level. John really didn't say much to me about school. He, I know he was very quiet. He never really came home and said, Mom, I hate this teacher. Mom, I hate this class. He never spoke of school. I guess I never really like updated my mom like day to day like about like my grades or anything like that. So I, I guess that she was a little like caught off guard that I did get first in my class. John said, oh yeah, mom, I got Val Victorian. And I'm like, you did? When were you gonna tell me? He goes, well, it was really no big deal. At the end of high school, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Earning money for playing the game, I think that's when it like kind of like turned a little bit more real. And then it got like extremely like real, like this is gonna be my life when I had to decide going to college uh, versus like playing esports full time. Getting Jonathan to go to college was not very easy. It was really hard to balance out doing college and uh, gaming at that time because I was already at the point where I was going to a bunch of lands. I, I ended up missing half of my classes and not because I'm a class skipper, but because I literally was not even there. Towards the end of the first semester, he had told me that he didn't want to do college anymore, that he was quitting, that he can make a lot more money in the gaming. And at that point, what was I going to do? 
But when John decided to discontinue college to pursue a career in esports, you know, we were all very supportive as a family. Esports was growing. This is a chance for him to pursue his dreams of being a professional esports player. It made a lot of sense. It didn't really get serious up until I started uh, being on Liquid, actually. I remember Nitro just like ended up like messaging me and I already knew like what he was gonna say. Like people that are like way better than you don't just message you for no reason wanting to like pug. I remember like he, he asked me to like pug a couple games or something like that. So we just like ended up playing and he started like asking me questions about the team, like what I thought. And I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he ended up like asking me to join at that time. And I was super excited because Everyone that ever played StarCraft knows who Team Liquid was. That was like the main hub back then. They had a really like elite status to me when I was like ever having like view of any orgs. I was like super happy that I was finally going to be able to get a shop because as I was growing up, I really wanted to become like a, a pro esports player. Throughout like my whole life, I really wanted to, that to be like my end goal career. And when I got into Liquid, that's when I was just like, wow, this is real. I'm finally going to get my shop to show what I'm capable of. So I first heard about Elige when we were making a consideration for a roster change. We asked Nick or Nitro, we said, hey, do you know anybody that may be really good to play on the team? And he had said, look, I've, I've played a few pickup games with uh, this guy named John or Liege, and he's young, he's hungry, he's got the mechanics, he's, he's not you know, as well known, but uh, I think he's pretty good. Elish was one of the very first players that we added to our Counter-Strike roster. I believe he joined just a few months after we entered the game. And he was so young and already so good. Generally speaking, we, we love to take those shots and take those opportunities to try and see if we can develop a talent into a superstar. When I first joined Liquid, I was definitely like the youngest uh, player on the team. I didn't have like a lot of experience. I didn't really know like that much about the game. Really my thinking back then was try not to lose. Like trying not to like be like bad and I didn't like really want like opportunities to fail. I think Elige when he first got to the team had it pretty rough. He's a perfectionist and he's the kind of guy that he works utterly hard and he studies and reviews and you could go over something once with John in two minutes and he's got it. And there's players that might need to go over it 10 times and they still might not get it. So, John in the first years had a lot of problems uh, in terms of just controlling his emotions because of just how smart he was. He had the skill, he had the chops, he had the intuition. All of that was spot on, but he lacked in some of the interpersonal dynamics and the teamwork that was required in order for there to be performance of the team, not him as an individual. And some of that developed over time. I do think um, Elish could struggle a little bit with the in-game dynamics of sort of the social interaction. You can have all the aim in the world that you want, but if you're not communicating as a five-man roster, you cannot be beating a, a world-class team. So sometimes that would hinder us a little bit uh, in the past. Back then, I, I wouldn't really say that it was more of like an ego thing, and I would say it's more on a communication thing. You know, the team was a really toxic environment back then. It was honestly not like a really good productive environment for like any new player to come into. You know, I grew up as like kind of like a shy person, not as outgoing. So when I first joined, I obviously had no experience with that, like trying to communicate exactly like what I thought. I don't know, I felt like I had like a much more like toxic mindset, I guess, for how I should be like approaching things and how I approached problems back then never actually got anything done. You have to be really productive when you're on a team. You have to be really open. If you don't do those things, you're never going to succeed. Unfortunately, I was just the one that had to be able to learn it. The team didn't want to like play with me anymore at that time because of just like all the issues like communication wise and all that stuff. And I actually wasn't going to be on Liquid anymore. We ended up looking into a newer player to come in that just had a little more stability. And I think this was the turning point in John's career. He realized that there's a lot more to the game than just being a good player, and you needed to be a good teammate and be understanding of your teammates. And I think it took him hitting that rock bottom, and I, I really think it was like a life-changing event for him. 
I ended up like just like messaging them again and just being like, guys, like I am going to do like whatever it takes. I know that I messed up a lot, but I'm going to, you know, work on my problems and, and fix everything that I can so I can I can be the teammate that you guys want to play with. Before we could ever approach him, he actually came to that realization totally on his own. It was really an important moment in his growth. I, I, I vividly remember, uh, not that he was like immediately a different person, but the path to his maturity and development became really clear from, from there on out. When we started to see the success from the Counter-Strike team, that was a result of, I think, a progression in the mindset for John, where he started to put importance on the relationship that he had with his teammates. I think it definitely was like my point in time where I was like, okay, I really gotta like fix this. I really gotta put like all my effort towards it. And that was also the time where I started like really getting into like sports psychology or like investing and stuff like that. And I tried to apply that to, to my gameplay. I, I really put like all the effort that I could trying to fix my communication problems. Seeing that development over time for John is kind of when the performance of the team was unlocked. And that's where so much of our success was cemented by John's journey through the team. And Liquid have it, they've got the championship, they've got Masters, and two in the Intel Grand Slam. Ladies and gentlemen, Team Liquid are your Season 9 Pro League champions. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Team Liquid, your Intel Extreme Master Chicago champions. There we go, Team Liquid have just unlocked the Intel Grand Slam and a million dollar bonus. People were screaming and yelling USA and the bodyguards that they had and people are trying to touch them. I still was surprised that like, this is, this is my kid. It was different. You can't explain it to anybody what a tournament is like unless you've actually gone to one. So I'm not surprised at all by Johnny Jeb's success in anything that he wanted to do because he was always a good student, a good learner. He always had the ability to achieve whatever he set out to do. So, and, and that's all you could ask for. And if he's happy and he loves what he does, I, I'm super proud of him. He can play a game, but he can't figure out how to use Google Meet. <laughs> Whoa, what's up, brother? Hey, <laughs> I brought somebody with me. Hey! Hey, man, Lisa. It is so good to see both of you guys. I've not seen you guys in so long, and it's just awesome. So I hear you're doing well, and I'm very proud of you. Of course, we both are. You guys still look like the exact same from what I remember. Like, you guys like have an age at all, I swear. Just, just keep letting those rip, you know? <laughs> but it's awesome. I love like seeing you guys and being able to talk to you guys after so long, because I've definitely thought about like how much uh, like going to the school has like impacted my life and like how I think about things and I mean you guys really like instilled like discipline and like respect like super early on in me and I think that's just like so important like how much of an impact you guys have made on my life and I'm really happy I get to be able to tell you guys that now because you guys did make a huge difference on my life. Well, we really appreciate yes. it. Love you. Love you. All right. Yes. Remember your second degree red dragon black belt. Don't ever forget where you came from, my friend. I think John is without a doubt the main piece to our success uh winning the grand slam he was on a record pace doing something that no player from north america has ever done he went from just being an insane student of the game to the full package and he holds himself accountable he wants to be the best he knows how good he is his confidence has been unlocked and without him the team wouldn't be what it is i mean he is a major major piece in the, of the puzzle. Over the past five years, we've seen a tremendous amount of growth from Elige. And I think this is an example where you can see playing in a team environment and, and being a gamer really helps his personal development as well. He's just continuously been on an upward path to developing himself. There's only a handful of people in the world that have been able to achieve what he has been able to in a grand slam for Counter-Strike. And you get to the top of that mountain and you look out and you say like, what's next? 
I really want to be able to become like the best team in the world for a long period of time, not just for a couple months. I, I want to like be that esports player that transcends through other esports. Like everybody knows who like Doublelift is, everyone knows who like Artezi is, and I want to be that good where people just know me because you're just that good. Like being like Faker. I guess I'm not completely sure like where like the drive to succeed comes from. It could be from like wanting to compete with my brother, but I, I do remember like one thing that someone said to me is just like you'll, you'll never be like the best because there's always someone that's gonna be better than you out there. And I always hated that because I felt like I want to be that person that is better than all the rest. That is what drives me to be that person that I was told that I couldn't be.